a very good good afternoon everyone uh, hi uh, this is vineet uh, i'm representing mcx uh, i have over around 16 years of experience in these financial markets i uh, prior to joining mcx i i had an experience uh, i was handling treasury of a uh, few of the corporates and uh, managing their risk on indian and international exchanging using derivatives and now with the mcx i work as senior manager and um, uh, interested with training and education uh, portfolio here so we talk to all market participants and make them aware of new developments and on the side and explain different products which are coming so uh, the intention of today's uh, seminar or session would be just to make you all aware on uh, uh, products and uh, derivatives mainly on options and index which we have so what i do is i uh, uh, go and take you through the presentation i have made and we'll take uh, your queries uh, one by one towards the end uh, so i start my session um, welcome to this uh, small uh, session on uh, uh, derivative instruments uh, in options and uh, index which we have on mcx uh, before i go uh, directly to uh, options and index let me just talk about commodities which are available to trade here uh, on mcx we have uh, all kinds of derivatives you know that is the uh, futures and options which are standardized and allowed to be traded here uh we have uh, the the segments are coming in front of you in bullion segment we have uh, uh gold and silver in both futures and options so marked in black are the futures contract and marked in blue are uh, options contract so we have gold options 1 kg contract we have silver options 30 kg contract we have silver mini options in 5 kg uh in energy side uh, we have this crude oil uh Uh, futures and natural gas futures uh, and also crude oil options in 100 barrels and natural gas options which we have recently launched on 17th of january 2022 uh, with contract size of uh, 1250 mm btu third segment which is there on the exchange we have base metals uh, in that we have futures in aluminium uh, copper lead nickel zinc wherein aluminium uh, lead and zinc are 5 metric ton contracts and copper and lead are uh, sorry copper and nickel are 2.5 metric ton and uh, 1.5 metric ton respectively on option side we have copper options of 2.5 metric ton uh, size uh, nickel options is 1.5 metric ton uh, zinc option is 5 metric ton contract Agri side, we only have futures as of now, uh, wherein we have cotton, uh, crude palm oil, kapas, menthol oil, and rubber. Apart from these, we also have index futures. Uh, this is what I'm going to talk about in detail in my presentation. So right now we have three segment indices. Uh, uh, one is in bullion, uh, bullion index, which represents uh, movement in gold and silver. Uh, we have a metal index, which represents movement in five base metals. We have aluminium, copper, lead, nickel, zinc, and we also have energy index, which is called as MCX I Complex Energy, which represents uh, crude oil and natural gas. Based on these indices, as been allowed by the regulator, we have bullion index futures, we have metal index futures, and we have energy index futures. So as of now, as product wise, this is what we have on the exchange. Uh, coming to the topic straight, uh, we have options uh, and index to be discussed today. So options we have uh, here is as a product based out of underlying which is another derivative that is a futures contract so we say typically we have options on futures that is a derivative on derivative we have uh, as in the last slide you know it, it's a just recap which is there on the top here slide we have options in in bullion side on gold 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 uh, 30 kg and gold mini we on um, base metals we have on copper zinc and nickel and crude oil and natural gas is what represents the energy segment for options on the exchange we have lately uh, introduced uh, this natural gas options uh, on 17th of jan this year and uh, we have seen and are seeing very good volumes over last uh, uh, couple uh, last not couple of month maybe around 10 to 12 month we have seen more uh, volumes being Uh, coming from uh, participants on option side they are using these non linear derivatives to strategize in combination with futures uh, maybe they are making uh, strategizing using options also and uh, overall you know with options less amount of uh, money is involved one 
and uh, second is advantages you can make n number of strategies whereby you can keep your downside uh, close and upside open maybe in a trending market you can also uh, keep your upside limited and keep your downside open uh, and uh, and you can do both ways you can keep your upside open as well as uh, sorry upside uh, limited and downside also limited so you can make n number of strategies plus if we combine options and futures so and we are able to manage our delta of the portfolio so we'll also get some amount of margin benefits um, you know in those uh, strategies and portfolios so overall uh, if we see the volumes on the exchange uh, in the last few months uh, it's been on a rising trend and there have been days when we have seen more volumes on options as uh, compared to futures so if we go into detail uh, what are these option on futures so uh, let me just uh, segregate the understanding and explanation in two main parts one is options on physical pro uh, on the products which are uh, uh, delivery based those are futures contract delivery based like uh, bullion side gold and silver and metal side copper zinc and nickel uh, these options they have their underlying as corresponding futures contract and these contracts they on expiry go for delivery you know that is one way second a group could be you know uh, we have options in natural gas and crude oil uh, uh, which have their corresponding futures as an underlying and these futures they go for cash settlement on expiry so if we take um, uh, gold and uh, silver bullion side gold silver silver mini options so these contracts they expire three business days prior to the expire start of their tender period of the underlying futures contract same is the case with base metal uh, options uh, these contracts on base metal options they expire three business days prior to the first day of the start of tender period of the underlying futures contract whereas in crude oil and natural gas the underlying is a cash settled product so these two option contracts in energy side they expire two business days prior to the expiry of the underlying futures contract so that is something you know to be noted while we make strategies all option on the exchange are european based that is uh, holders will be able to exercise their right only on expiry correspondingly um, the strike prices and their intervals uh, are all uh, uh, given in the contract uh, for the bullion side uh, minimum 51 call european and put european uh, are the strikes you will find at any point in time uh, for uh, energy side minimum 31 call european and put european you will always find uh, in the screen as per contract and the metal side uh, metal segment you will have at least 15 call european and 15 put european the uh, strike prices uh, which are given uh, in a particular contract they have some uh, defined strike intervals you know that is different for all the option contracts that is for gold it is 100 rupees difference between the strike uh, prices which are there for silver and silver mini it is 250 and uh, crude oil and natural gas it is uh, 50 for crude oil and 5 rupees gap uh, for natural gas strike prices copper also 5 rupees gap uh, in option uh, strikes zinc it is 2 rupees and 50 paisa and nickel it is uh, with the gap of 20 rupees you know you will have all strikes available tick size uh, that is the minimum price movement in options for a bullion segment for uh, gold and silver and silver mini options it is 50 paisa crude oil has a 10 paisa as the tick size natural gas 5 paise copper uh, 1 paisa zinc 1 paisa and nickel uh, uh, sorry cop copper 1 paisa zinc 1 paisa and nickel 5 paisa as the tick size since these are uh, options based out of futures contract so their daily price limit is being set determined by uh, on the basis of black 76 model which takes underlying futures as the product uh, Positions when we trade in options are twice as what we usually see in their underlying futures contract. And as far as daily settlement is concerned, in options it is on T plus one basis. So uh, from buyer side upfront premium is blocked on uh, immediate basis and the credit goes uh, to the seller on the next day. That is T plus one settlement. Uh, interestingly, when we uh, go for final settlement, 
uh, what happens? Uh, all exercisable positions on final settlement, since the underlying is futures contract, gets converted into the underlying futures contract on final settlement. So, you know, this doesn't keep uh, people from trading. You can enter and exit many times within the life of contract and number of times do your strategies. But yes, one has to remember that if we keep our positions open till expiry, so um, in option contracts, if the options are exercisable, you know, on expiry, they could get devolved into underlying futures contract. So let us just understand this concept, you know, what is this devolvement and final settlement. Daily basis settlement is on T plus one basis, wherein upfront premium gets blocked from the buyer side and uh, from the seller side, uh, it gets credited on T plus one basis for all your profit and losses of trade as well. But on final settlement, the option positions, they get devolved into underlying futures contracts. So what happens on expiry? If you have exercisable positions, so long positions, long positions in call gets converted into corresponding buying of futures. Buyers of put, uh, they, it gets converted into sell, sell futures position. Correspondingly to long positions, seller of call, it gets converted into selling of futures and seller of put, their position gets converted into buying a futures contract. So if we see pictorically, you know, what is this devolvement and when it happens, I've picked up an example with a natural gas, uh, which we have launched recently. So it is, it is a cash settled futures contract as an underlying for natural gas option. So uh, if we take the current date, uh, near month contract, which goes for expiry for natural gas would be on 23rd of February, 2022. Based on this, we already have a running natural gas option contract. So it would be a slightly shorter contract than the underlying futures contract. How many days shorter? That The answer would be two days shorter because as per contract specifications, uh, crude oil and natural gas contract, uh, option contracts, they expire two days prior to the expiry of their underlying futures. So if we go with the same concept and if natural gas under gas futures contract expires on 23rd of Feb, so options on natural gas will expire two days prior, that is on 21st of February, right? So uh, this is the concept for cash settle products. And when it is a uh, cash settle underlying futures contract, so when it is a delivery based underlying futures contract, so this concept is, is you know, that expiry of option moves, you know, slightly earlier, that is three business days prior to the start of first tender day of the underlying futures contract. So that is something, you know, which we have to keep in mind that in case we don't want to keep our positions uh, for, uh, uh, you know, devolvement on expiry. So we have to roll over our product, our uh, strategies or close our positions before that expiry period comes in. Now, uh, daily basis, we can enter and exit and do as many strategies. This is what I mentioned, but we have to be slightly careful to in understanding, you know, what happens to our position on expiry. On expiry, there could be three ways, you know, as per the old mandate and the new mandate, I'll also explain as per the old mandate of the regulator contracts, which were launched prior to 1st February, 2022, right? They will follow the concept, which is right now there on the screen. That is on expiry. Uh, if options uh, fall out of the money, those options will expire worthless. Okay. All in the money options will automatically get devolved into the underlying futures contract. But this could be stopped when the in the money option holder gives the contrary instructions to the exchange that they don't want to devolve their positions. In the case when contrary instructions are received from in the money option holder, uh, in that case, the options expire worthless. Okay. Now, the third situation which is there on expiry is uh, CTM, close to the money, which was as per the old mandate. What happens to CTM? Now, before going to CTM and understanding what happens to, to, to uh, strikes which falls under this CTM ban, let us just understand what is this CTM and how is it determined? Okay. See, I've taken an example, uh, just few figures, you know, to explain it to you, what is this CTM? I've taken few of the strikes, strike intervals for crude oil prices. 
crude oil option, the strike price interval was of 50 rupees, you know, between different strikes. So this is what I have taken on the screen in front of you to explain you the CTM concept. So on expiry of crude oil options, okay, whatever has been the underlying futures contract, crude futures contract, close price of that day. If it is 47.10, just look at the first set of data. If the underlying crude oil futures contract close price on the day of option settlement was 47.10, in that case, nearest strike to 47.10 would be 4700. It becomes ATM. Okay. Two strike prices below this ATM and two strike prices above this ATM, these five strike prices. Okay, from 4600 to 4800, it forms a band called a CTM. Similarly, if we flip to the extreme right, if the underlying crude oil future set, uh, closing price on the option settlement was 4730, in that case, nearest uh, strike to 4730 was 4750, it becomes ATM. Two strike prices below. 4750 and two strike prices above 4750. That is a band from strikes of 4650 to 4850. It becomes CTM. Now, there could also be a remote situation wherein the underlying crude oil futures contract comes at 4725. That is exactly, you know, that 25 is in midway of the strike price interval. Now, in that case, there won't be any ATM. So, Two strike prices below 4725, that is 4700 and 4650, and two strike prices above 4750 and 4800. Four strike prices in that case would be taken as CTM. Now, these prices I am not taken at the current level because these are just for example and explaining the concept. Right. So once we have understood the CTM band, how it is uh, it is formed, you know, on expiry. Let us see, let us just see what happens to the CTM positions. Okay. So uh, in this ETM band, if you would have seen carefully, we have five strikes. So at any point in time, two strikes prices would be in the money for call options and two out of the money for call options. And for put options, again, two prices will be in the money and two will be out of the money. So what happens? Uh, people who have their positions coming in CTM, if they want their positions to be taken forward, Okay, buyers of the options, you know, whose strikes are falling into CTM, they can give explicit instructions to the exchange that I want to take my uh, positions forward and let them devolve into futures. So instructions from people whom we have received as an exchange will be taken forward. Otherwise, if we don't receive any explicit instructions from the uh, buyers of options falling in CTM band, all positions will expire worthless. So this is the concept right now. Now, what, what is the change? As per the latest mandate given by uh, SEBI, who is the regulator, contracts being launched after 1st of February 2022, that is this year, in options, commodity options, will have out of the money, you know, in, in case if... Uh, uh, you know, on expiry, uh, options are out of the money, they go worthless. If options are in the money, right, they automatically get devolved. You know, what I have just explained, in case contrary instructions are received from the in the money option holders, so in those cases, options will not be taken forward, right? Plus, in that case, you know, CTM concept will go away, okay? That is options uh, being launched after 1st of February and options which are running will go with the same set of uh, rules which I have just guidelines which I have just explained. So how does it happen? For a delivery based underlying futures that is uh, bullion side options and the base metal side options what happens? If E is the expiry, four days prior to the expiry a sensitivity report is being uh, sent to all the members and their client based on their positions, open positions, which they have. Okay. Now, based on the sensitivity report, one day prior to expiry, that is E minus one day, 25%, up to 25% of margin is charged. Okay. On expected to be in the money option contracts. Okay. Last on expiry day, this margin, it is called as uh, devolvement margin. Uh, on expiry day, fifth, starting of the day, 
on the basis of yesterday's sensitivity report 50% margins again would be levied to the probable in the money positions okay so it is on last two days of the option margins are being levied and once positions they get devolved into futures then remaining margin is levied on the expiry plus one day okay and after that expiry plus one day since options they have open positions which are twice you know as compared to the underlying futures contract so the option the uh, after expiry the positions would have all converted into futures now uh, two days uh, are there you know e, e plus one and e plus two are two days which are uh, there within which the futures uh, position holders have to bring down their positions into the open position limits as per the futures contract they can square off their position and bring in in the limit as defined in the futures contract and uh, thereafter contract settles as per the terms which are mentioned in the settlement of a future contract so once option gets devolved into future it ends as a future contract you know two days are there for bringing your position in the oi limit and then if if anybody is interested in going for delivery and that tender period and delivery period so contract enters that phase and it settles as a future contract whereas you know for wherein the underlying is a cash settled futures that is in the case of crude oil and natural gas in this case prior two days prior to the expiry the sensitivity report again is coming based on the sensitivity reports same same situation e minus 1 day uh, starting of the day uh, 25% of the futures margins will be levied for uh, probable in the money positions and on the last day 50% and once if positions gets devolved remaining percentage of margin will be charged on e plus 1 basis exactly same way you know two days uh, what happens here in in this uh, uh, settlement wherein the underlying is a cash settle contract we expire two days prior to the expiry day so you have time wherein you can bring down your open open interest uh, positions within the limits as per futures contract and can leave the contracts if you don't want to square off you can leave because contracts get settled in cash on expiry so this is something one has to uh, take a note of plus uh, ctt on uh, premium to sellers is charged at 0.05% and on exercise buyers of call and puts they are charged 0.001% and once the positions gets converted into futures so whenever that sell side happens that ctt on futures is levied so this is something you know from taxation point of view we have to remember so overall the situation is uh, these these are the options which are there you know we have gold options silver options silver mini crude options copper zinc options nickel and natural gas options with their respective contract size with their respective tick size Per tick uh, movement, you know what would be the profit and loss for gold? It will be fifty rupees per tick movement. We'll have fifty uh, rupees profit and loss on the contract. Uh, silver options, we'll have fifteen rupees uh, profit and loss per tick. Silver mini two point five rupees. Crude options ten rupees. Uh, you know profit and loss per tick. Copper option twenty five rupees profit and loss per tick. Zinc fifty rupees. Nickel seventy five rupees. And natural gas option is sixty two point fifty rupees profit and loss per tick movement. And all of them they have their un corresponding underlying futures as the underlying. Okay. And now, since we are dealing in options, commodity options, so sometimes the question comes in mind is what what is the basis on which option premiums are moving. so it is uh, the prices are moving based on the price uh, factors which influence the price of underlying futures contract plus the premiums are influenced by the strike levels in which you want to trade maybe in the money at the money out of the money it also has a slight impact uh, you know coming from the, the time value theta that is the, the days left for expiry of the contract so contracts which are near expiry will have lesser premium as compared to the contracts which have uh, some more days to expiry uh, changes in the prices that is volatility will have the the uh, impact on the underlying option 
uh, option values plus as well as some uh, slight movement in the interest rates will also have its impact on the premium so it is overall you know these factors which are to be analyzed and assessed which have some bearing on the option premium now we go to the other product which is uh, index derivatives which we have on the exchange the concept here is when you will open the screen you will find you know single commodity indices also being displayed what is the single single commodity indices like gold index will be there silver index will be there aluminum index copper like this you will find some you know single commodity indices would be there now these indices are excess return index which they are getting their values from underlying futures contract near month contract value okay the latest uh, front month contract value is being taken to get values of these single commodity indices which don't expire these are only for reference now based on these single commodity indices which are running weightages are assigned to them and we have sectoral indices like we have a mcx icomdex boolean index which is called as buldex it gets its value from the underlying single commodity index a weightage is assigned to silver uh, gold index and silver index and then this bullion index is formed and in turn these gold and silver indexes are getting their value from the underlying futures contract so from gold 1 kg near month contract gold index value will be defined silver index it's getting its value from the near month contract of tkg silver futures contract so what we say typically is these are excess return indexes they get the same return what is seen on the underlying futures contract is in the same percentage you will see that same return reflected in the single commodity indexes so likewise uh, in metal index what happens is it it is getting its uh, you know weightages are assigned to uh, five single commodity indices that is copper index lead nickel zinc uh, and aluminum in a in a percentage weight which is assigned by given by the exchange and then this metal index is being formed and likewise energy index is also a segment index who is getting its value from the crude oil and natural gas indices so these indices they will represent the segment as a whole um, and uh, these indices are itself a risk mitigating uh, i would say instruments whereby single commodity risk through weightages are neutralized and reduced when indices are made plus on the screen you'll also find composite index so the concept goes nobody trades on an index index value is taken as a underlying for index derivatives on which trade happens so we have bullion index futures metal index futures and energy index futures on which trading is happening right uh all these indices they have their base value starting value of 10000 with base year as 31st december 2015 uh these are the current year uh, weightages which are applicable in the indices so in january month every year new weightages are are into force are they are applied in the market uh, for index uh, and these weightages they remain same for a complete year so that is where we find a uh, we form a policy whereby in commodity derivatives indexes are rebalanced on an annual basis so it means that in October 2021 exchange MCX has announced these 20 year 2022 weightages that is 3 months prior of actual implementation of weightages the new weights will be announced and once these weights they come into force in january say 2022 they remain same throughout the year and in october 2022 exchange will again announce the new weights for the year 2023 so this is an annual rebalancing of weight which happens here now on what basis these weights are assigned and made or changed there is a detailed document on our website but for your information let me just tell you we take into consideration both the derivatives and the physical market so usually we take uh, last 12 months uh, liquidity on the derivatives and consider that and also we consider uh, last 5 years you know availability of the product in the physical market and then you know there is a formula on basis on which these weights are defined and are may announced every october okay so what do we have in these index derivatives and as their contracts these are very very retail oriented products whereby you will see 
the three index uh, uh, futures have their corresponding index as an underlying. So if it is a Boolean index future, so the underlying is MCX, ICOMDEX, Boolean or BULDEX. Metal index futures will have an underlying as metal index, uh, metal index or we call as metal dex. Energy index futures will have the underlying as energy index, which is running uh, right there live. Trading unit for all these three futures contract on indices would be uh, for Boolean. It is 50 times the current Boolean index value, metal index 50 times the metal index value, and in energy index, it is 125 times the energy index value. So one tick movement, uh, okay, of uh, one tick movement in the underlying for Boolean index futures and metal index future will result in profit and loss of 50 points. And for one tick movement in energy index future, the uh, profit and loss per tick would be 125 units. Margins, since they are risk mitigated product, uh, you know, margins are relatively lesser as compared to the underlying futures contract. I have a slide prepared, you know, I'll show you that as well. Uh, the advantage here is, uh, you know, uh, the contracts which are available, they are all cash settled. All index derivatives are cash settled products. They are lesser value products as compared to the underlying futures contracts. And they are, uh, since weightages are assigned, they are, uh, risk is also less here. So at any point in time, three calendar month contracts are available in index derivatives, index futures on the exchange. They are all cash settled on expiry. Plus, uh, these index index derivatives are available daily from uh, morning till uh, uh, night time, 11.30 uh, in summers and 11.55 in winters. But on expiry day, contract expires at 5 o'clock. Okay, that is something to be noted. P uh, you know, if you have uh, strategies or people uh, trading in these uh, instruments, index derivatives. So on expiry day, the contract expires at 5 o'clock. On what basis? Last one hour. Uh, weighted average prices of the underlying futures contract on that basis, whatever would be the index value on that price, all open interest, open outstanding positions gets cash settled, right? Now, what is the expiry date of these index derivatives? It is since these are contracts wherein expiry date will come whenever they are launched. But the logic is it also expires, you know, th three days prior to the start of the tender period on the underlying constituent contracts, okay? So, um, uh, correspondingly, since they are derivatives, uh, position limits are assigned client-wise and member-wise, you know, so, let, so those are as per the contract, uh, the limits assigned in the contract. Now, let us just see the uh, important part. When I said this, these are the smaller contracts, if I take yesterday's closing price of index, okay? So uh, the bullion index was at 14,108, uh, metal index was around 18,464 and energy index was 6,673. So what would be the contract value? See, if I talk about bullion index, it comes only to 7,5,400 contract size. As compared, you know, I have a slide there, you know, as compared to the individual underlying futures contract, these are very small uh, values. Uh, for metal index, it becomes a 9 lakh contract, 9 lakh 23,000. And energy index, it becomes 8 lakh 34,000 contract value. Profit and loss per take, you know, we know for Boolean index and metal index is 50 uh, units per take and 125 units per uh, per unit, uh, per take moment is for uh, energy index futures. If I include, you know, for example, just for example and understanding, if I add exchange transaction fees and uh, stamp duty, which is uh, charged from buyers, and uh, GST on transaction fees and uh, your CTT on sell side. In a way, what I'm trying to see is if I take a round trip, any retail participant, if they want to take a round trip, enter and exit, and you know, you, your broker can add their own brokerages, what they charge, you know, which I have, have not taken into consideration. So if I say the total cost is coming at around, you know, if I add all of them, 127, 167, and 151, you know, correspondingly in these three calculations on uh, index derivatives. So roughly, if I would say around three tick movement is what is sufficient in uh, uh, bullion index to break even around three and a half to four ticks in uh, metal index and around two, one and a half to two ticks in energy index futures. So, you know, the product which is, which is in which we are able to reach our break even in minimum ticks 
becomes the favorite i would say uh, instrument to trade so you know this has been possible in these index derivatives wherein contract size is lesser they are cash settled products and the break even is is quicker as compared to other products on the exchange so um, i i would say this becomes more retail oriented product and this is what i wanted to say uh, say when you know i was saying risk is less contract size is less just see since this bullion index futures eventually is getting its value from underlying 1 kg gold futures and silver futures so somebody who, who has uh, deep understanding only in gold but they don't have deep understanding in silver or even if they have deep understanding of silver futures as well so what happens one tick movement i am in a contrast i have compared bullion index futures gold and silver futures as well so contract size is 1 kg for gold 30 kg for silver and 50 units into index value for uh, bullion index tick size in all of them is 1 so per tick movement in gold futures is 100 rupees uh, gain and loss uh, silver rate is 30 and bullion index it is 50 now understand i have taken yesterday's close price gold is was it was 48228 its value becomes 48 lakh 22000 and margin is 9.25% so overall margin which gets blocked is 4 lakh 46109 as compared to uh, you know plus silver is last these values were 62035 value will be 18 lakhs 11% margin here and the margin which gets blocked is around 2 lakhs so if somebody wants to take a view as in this in this whole segment with gold and silver you know they have to with futures they they, get, they have to have around 6 lakh 50000 margin blocked right plus these are compulsory delivered product on expiry whereas index value was 14119 multiply with the uh, in 50 trading unit so contract size is very i mean as compared to 48 lakh and 18 lakh total would be how much uh, maybe uh, 64 lakhs around uh, 66 but here it is only 7 lakh contract and you just see the margin since they are rich diverse diverse product so margin is only 6% of the total value which comes at around 42000 and the main part is they are all cash settled on expiry so it it, it tells you know uh, when i say it is a retail oriented product it shows here you know similarly if i talk about the metal side aluminum copper lead nickel zinc you know we all are aware of the contract sizes which i have mentioned and metal index futures also side by side so uh, if we take yesterday's price of all of them and see the contract size if i want to trade on the full uh, uh, i would say spectrum of base metals so around 12 lakh value for aluminum 18 lakh for copper 9 lakh for lead uh, 26 lakh for nickel and 15 lakhs for zinc is what is the value i will be trading on as compared to only if i trade in metal index futures the contract value is only 9 lakh 26000 and if i just see the margin it is it is fairly less here and uh, uh, maybe uh, 58000 what it takes for me to take a position on metal index futures and get exposure to all these base metals in the assigned uh, weightages which were there uh, you know in the previous slide which we saw and again it is a cash settled product plus if i talk about crude oil and natural gas uh, Uh, there is not much of a difference in the value you know it is a 6 lakh 80000 3 lakh 89000 so maybe around uh, 10 and a half to 11 lakhs contract whereas uh, energy index futures is around 8 lakhs so 8 lakh value contract but you just look at the margins you know natural gas 44% around margins and crude oil 21% so that becomes you know 1 lakh 44000 margin block then for crude oil and natural gas 1 lakh 72000 as compared to 1 lakh 24 in the energy index future but they are all settled in cash so you know, these products could be explored differently in a different way you know because uh, this is what i meant by uh, even though uh, you know we have underlying futures contracts this is on which we get index values but index derivatives uh, index futures they have their own advantage they are cash settled products lesser contracts with lesser margin lesser risk so you know these these could be seen as products you know on which some strategies could be made so overall some advantages of index derivatives i would say they are medium size contract cash settled very low break even call maybe in some three ticks are enough in some four ticks to avoid single commodity risk you know it, it allows the diversification naturally that is the reason uh, the margins are lesser here for as an as a segment it could act as a benchmark segment wise indices are there 
for bullion industry for metal industry for energy segment but you can do a lot many strategies wherein break even is quicker in lesser takes you know trading investment jobbing arbitrage a lot many strategies could be uh, used here this is where i would like to thank you for listening to us understanding the product and i stop my presentation here and we'll take all the queries which are raised by the participants so we'll take these queries one by one so um, uh there is a query from uh, mr vinay kumar uh, he is asking how to read volumes in options uh vinay ji i would just uh, tell uh, just like to uh, explain it to you you know when when we have to read options we have to just see the option chain which is there on the screen so just see what has been the change in oi and um, what has been the volumes and uh, maybe somebody can guide you with the uh, uh, you know those details in front Uh, so i mean uh, we can uh, read those uh, details and see you know what has been the change in oi uh, over different strike prices which are there and understand aditya kanan is uh, asking how is margin of commodity calculated now uh, since i have already explained you know in the last slide how it is calculated in terms of value but if you are asking you know how exchange calculates the value so we have a, a software which is span uh, standard portfolio analysis of which it is a, a software which is followed by cme and all big exchanges so that is uh, what we also follow so um, during the day uh, it it takes care of uh, the price and uh, price volatility and other aspects and it gives the variation you know uh, volatility taking into consider movement in the prices and then uh, it it considers different scenarios uh, worst case scenarios and best case scenarios and then margins are given by this software which exchange levies you know it it is this software on which basis margins are calculated from the exchange point of view and from trading point of view the margins which we gave this you have it's a percentage of the contract value so i hope you know if you would have followed my last slide you would have seen how margins were calculated a uh, payal chakravarty she is she has a query like uh, if i want to build a portfolio by commodity derivatives trading how can i go about it uh, it is very simple payal uh, you just first uh, understand you know um, uh which all products you have an interest in and if you have an interest only in commodities i'm sure you will be having some of your uh, in investments in equities as well so naturally uh, to make a portfolio you should choose a products which have negative to low correlation so um, uh this is what you know we see commodities they have low to negative correlations with the currency side and the interest rates and maybe some some amount of uh, uh you know that correlation is there with the equity side so accordingly you pick uh, the products you know which you feel have low to negative correlation plus you uh, you should understand those products as well you know um, the adequate knowledge uh, on the fundamental side and price behavior you have to understand and then pick the uh, right product to be part of a portfolio next next uh, we have uh, um, moin sheik and shahid beg they want to know what are option strategies ah uh, this is something you know very open ended uh, query you have in mind uh, moin ji and shahid i just wanted to tell you we you know when we talk about options these are non linear products you can make many strategies whereby uh, uh, you know uh, to name few uh, it would be very tough you can do some naked options like you can buy a call single on if you feel you know market prices are expected to go up you similarly you can sell a call you can buy a put sell a put you can combine these options with futures and make some strategies you can do synthetic futures and do some arbitrage strategies you can do uh, you can protect your downside and keep your upside open like strategies we have on uh, protective put protective call you know we have uh, 
covered call covered put you know these are strategies which are made you made using futures on the range bound uh, uh, scenarios which you perceive from time to time even you know sometimes we can uh, block the downside and we can block the upside using commodity uh, options uh, wherein we can be into uh, products like um, uh, bull call spreads bear um, bear put spreads you know uh, bull put spread so plus we sometimes we have four leg strategies like butterfly spread uh, long butterfly short butterfly iron butterfly iron condor butterfly you know so you know let me not just bog down with different names of strategies but the point is we can make combinations of options with futures options with other options and as per the market situation whether it, whether it is uh, you know range bound whether it is a momentum strategy we can do a lot many things uh, rishikesh uh, uh, is asking does currency have an impact on commodity derivatives how yes currency has a negative uh, correlation with commodity market how uh, see most of the commodities which are traded across the world they are uh, valued in commodity prices and mainly uh, in dollars because dollar is one of the vital currency so if dollar appreciates the commod commodity values uh, you know to buy the same product people require more uh, of their local currency so in that case commodity value comes down so it has a negative impact with the commodity prices currency market so typically that relation is taken and whenever we talk about strategizing for commodities we have to always take into consideration what is the impact which we are, are uh, expecting from the currency price movement now there is one more uh, query see uh, there is one query uh, kisom kumar you no know, he is asking about uh, bank nifty which may not be related to uh, what we have discussed right now but still you know for uh, uh, since he has asked i am just taking it um, here uh, he says like uh, if i sell one lot nifty bank option pay uh, Uh, put european or uh, call european and it expires as out of the money do i need to square it off before expiry or buying for buying i know that i don't need to square off it expires out of the money see i mean uh, kisum uh, kumar i would say um, it is purely uh, you know when to enter and exit and strategizing is purely uh, uh the traders view you know we cannot suggest that but yes if you know the concept how contracts are moving you can plan your uh, entry uh, your exits you know depending on whether you want to go till the end or whether you want to expire so if if i take case in if i take uh, you know example of commodity option say just just taking an example that in case if you are in the money okay and uh, you don't want your positions to get devolved so it is better to square off rather than you know keeping your positions open up till expiry and then you know you just give a, a contrary instructions on the exchange whereby by giving contrary instructions your uh, uh, full option value becomes worthless whereas you know if you could have uh, squared off in the money you would have taken that in the money profit you know that could that way so it totally depends on um, you know if you understand the products which are there you know on the exchange so you can decide accordingly what you want to do and take your positions there okay uh i think uh, uh okay uh Uh, somebody is asking sk where do we get open high low close prices for crude oil and gold futures are they available on mcx website answer is yes you will find all of the data on the mcx website but they will be slightly delayed but i will request you to get in touch with your uh, member you know he might be able to also give you a uh, live feed definitely on mcx website yes the see all data are available you can browse and see but they are slightly delayed Uh, by a minute or by two min two minutes or three minutes, I guess. 
Uh, he has a second part to the query SKG. Uh, he is asking, are there hedging benefits available in M6 for uh, futures hedged with options? Yes, I mean, uh, futures hedged with options, I'm not able to get your uh, query clearly here. Uh, you can hedge your futures with options. You know, what hedging benefits are you asking? I am not clear about that. But definitely you can hedge your futures uh, say for example you you intend uh, your intention is or your expectation is that prices might go up but you also feel you know there are some factor factors in the markets or some uh, events are about to happen the markets can give a sharp fall on the downside so you can use put option to you know protect the downside uh, wherever which whichever whichever level you are comfortable with yes you can do that you can edge your futures risk by using options Uh, where do we get open high low close? I mean, it's there on the website. Uh, please, you know, if you can browse, um, we can see the data. But I guess since there are no more queries, uh, so uh, we we end the live feed here. And uh, thank you all for joining is joining here. Thanks a lot uh, for your um, patience and uh, listening out to us. Thank you very much.